Apartment 3B by Audrey Whitman in Chronicles of Darkness Core Rulebook, read by Professor Jimbles. Now. This is all your fault, Dord whispered. They were running. Well, scrambling, really, searching for the safe decks that Zimina had been so certain was down this stretch of hallway. Well, you were the one who shined the flash flashlight in its eyes. You woke it up. You were the one who screamed when it looked at us. I wasn't expecting it to move. Besides, it didn't even have any ears. Maybe you just weren't looking closely enough. It probably had like a hundred ears, and it's chasing us because you screamed at it. Then why are we even whispering? Mayna huffed. It's not like it matters. If it's got a hundred ears, it can probably hear us everywhere. Dawn, did it look like Mrs. Luz to you? I hope not. If I had just hit Mrs. Luz with a flashlight, your mum is going to kill me, even if it was your idea to come down here in the first place. Yeah, well, let's worry about how long we're going to get grounded, once we're definitely sure we're going to live long enough to get grounded. They skidded to a stop in front of a smooth metal door, and Mena cursed. Swearing is vulgar, Dawn said, breathless and bitterly disappointed. And finally found a door. There was no knob. You'd better run and tell you, go tell your mum, then. Don't worry about me, I'll just stay here and get eaten by something with a hundred ears while I'm waiting for you to stop being a baby. Dawn crouched on the floor and peered through the hole where the doorknob ought to have been. And I'll know when it's here be eating you because you'll shut up at the first time in your life. Mayna rolled her eyes. You'd miss me so much that you'd die. Yeah, because that thing would eat me next. My last few seconds of life would definitely be spent silently warning you though, not wondering why I let you talk me into this. As long as we're clear on that. Mayna picked up a screw from the ground next to Dawn. Jeez, whoever broke these doors sure didn't know what they were doing. Can I have your flashlight? Dawn handed it over. The lens is cracked, but the bulb still works. What do you mean? Mayna just stood at the metal to try to surround them. I mean that they didn't just take the knob off, they wrecked it. These screws are stripped and the wood's cracked where they must have pulled it out. Dawn, what room is this? Dawn looked up. It's pretty dark, so I'm not sure, but I think it's the compactor room. Why? Who would want to break the door to the trash compactor? It's half off its hinges. Dawn went pale. Mena, what are we actually doing here? Well, you heard my mum. When Jenna went missing, it was down here, so it's the best place to check. And the cops didn't even look for her. They probably missed lots of stuff down here. Like the creepy old woman chasing us? Well, if they'd seen her, wouldn't they have done something? Dawn shot Jim in a, an irritated look. Yeah, they would have shot her, and we would have... Well, we would have all gotten arrested for making the place look untidy. You said dang head, Mayna. They didn't look because they didn't want to find anything. Maybe they knew there was something down here. I saw the cop who handcuffed your dad talking to the lawyer who's hassling Poppy to sell this place. Dawn shuddered. Ew, the one with the milky eyes? He gives me the creeps. Why didn't you tell me you thought there might be someone down here? I didn't think they would still be here, or that you were going to blind the first thing we saw before cracking in the face with your flashlight. At least I'm taking initiative. She paused for half a breath. Don't you live here? How do you not know where the emergency exits are? Not all of us were born 30 years old, Dawn. There's a map on the door in my apartment, okay? I didn't think I'd need to memorize it. Dawn suggested that for a moment, looking thoughtful. But if you had to guess, the next door, the one after that, Mena, we got to have run at least a mile by now, and we haven't even turned a corner. The, the building isn't this big. Look, Mena grabbed Dawn's shoulder, and they careened towards a door fitted so close to the wall that they'd almost run past it. See, I told you the fire door was this way. Mena, are you sure this is the right door? The door was damp and hot to the touch, its surface so soft that Dawn's hand left fingerprints where she had touched it. She quickly pulled her hand away. Ew, Mena, the door was feeling my hand. It was like touching me back. 3B? I didn't even know there were apartments down here. The number looked like it had been carved into the door with a knife, exposing some red-brown interior wood. Mena touched a, raised a hand to touch it. No. Dawn grabbed Mena's hand and started pulling her away. No, this door's weird, and it's not the right one anyway. Let's, let's go already. Dawn, it's just a door. It couldn't be touching you back. She stepped back towards the door. Aren't you the one who's always saying we should, you know, examine our world? I'm going to test your hypothesis that this ordinary door is covertly feeling the hands of teenagers. Its surface seemed to ripple slightly, smoothing into something that almost looked like wood grain. Look, it moved. Did you see it move? 
Cinder Louisa Salazar, there is something made of skin and old clothes that is chasing us. It seems like a bad time for you to demonstrate a sudden interest in skepticism. Dawn started dragging Mano back away from the door. As she did, a tiny tendril of something wood-coloured stretched off the surface of the door towards Mano's hand. Dawn shrieked and pulled Mano so hard they both fell over. Mano staggered up and helped Dawn back to her feet. Okay, I'm going to tentatively confirm your hypothesis that this is a totally weird draw and we should run. Thank you. Little rats, little rats, what are you doing in my basement? The voice seemed to come from the walls themselves, dry as old paper and matte quality, without even an echo to point to where the old woman might already be standing. They spun, waving the flashlight around them. Oh, shit, Dawn whispered. For all her shaking, Maynard spoke up first. It's our basement too, you know. We live here. We've got just as much of a right to be here as you. Ten minutes ago. Dawn swung her flashlight around the room once more. Mena, I don't think there's anything down here, just a bunch of spiders and broken furniture. Why hasn't your dad cleaned this out yet? There's practically a whole new unit. A voice from the hallway called. Too close to the laundry room outtake, it kept getting mildewy and no one wanted to stay there. She poked her head through the doorway. Gross, it even smells mildewy in there. What am I looking for again? Anything of Jenna's? I don't know, earrings, schoolbook, or a stupid pony pen case? There was a clink and a roll, and Dawn's flashlight skidded to a halt. Butterflies? What? She might have started walking into the room. Did she like butterflies? Yeah, I think she collected them or something. Uh, why? Dawn just sat down to the jar of butterfly wings, rocking against the concrete. They took reflexive steps toward one another, and Dawn slowly panned the flashlight up. A pile of old clothes crammed between the two halves of a broken crouch rippled as the light moved, settling into a perfectly still face under the pale yellow light. Dawn, Mena whispered, can you make it any brighter? I think so. The flashlight clicked twice, deepening the shadows in the still, wrinkly face. Within those depths, one eye opened, and then the next... It lunged, clumsy and covered in piles of fabric and clattering everywhere with little bits of children's jewellery. Mena screamed, Dawn swung the flashlight wildly and heard it crack. The light flickered and something howled. And they ran. And then... The figure peeled away from the shadows, close enough for Dawn to feel its breath, cold and rotten smelling on her neck. From far away, she had looked impossibly old. Yesterday, half a hallway away, Mrs. Lowe's had been a picture of a decrepit old age, with furrows of loose skin bunched along her face and arms, crowding her faint features, squeezed into a baggy dress and dull support hose. Today, in this close, the resemblance to a person somewhat faltered. The skin seemed to shape her face rather than the other way around, forming the impression of eyes and mouth out of shadow and flesh. The hose melted into the color of dry skin as she rippled rapidly toward them. Her hand flowed towards Dawn like water, skin crashing onto skin, lightly stretching to engulf her outflung arm. Dawn screamed and desperately yanked at her arm, now surrounded by a puddle of skin mottled and studded with tiny blue streaks that must have looked like capillaries at a distance. Mrs. Luz, Mina tentatively called out. Her voice sounded like bedbugs and waking up in a cold sweat. As good a name as any other, but you can't name me to get rid of me, little rat. She slowly pulled Dawn closer. This is your home too, eh? Which one of you belongs to the man who owns my nest? More soft waves of skin crept down Dawn's arm and across her chest, and her struggling was getting fainter. Don't wait too long. I might lose interest in your answer. Mena tried to grab Dawn's other arm, but Mrs. Luz wrenched her away, spinning her to the left. Dawn whimpered and turned her head and mouthed something Mena couldn't understand. I am. It's me. Let her go, Mena shouted. The folds of Mrs. Luz's face... Rearrange into something that might have meant to be a smile. Good girl. You will take a message from me to the man. Dawn was shifting. Very slowly, Mrs. Luz grasped. She caught him in his eyes again and stared, gesturing slightly to the left with her eyes. Dawn was angry, not scared, so she must need time. Mena paused and tried to catch Mrs. Luz's eyes. 
What man? To your father, stupid child. Tell him he mustn't sell my home to hollow men who have been creeping around here at night. I'll kill as many of you as I must to drive them off, but it can all stop if he promises not to sign anything they give him. Hollow men? The the, the lawyer, you mean? Uh, Poppy said he was a real estate investor. Nonsense words. He is an empty thing that traded favors for a face and a name, and the men he speaks for don't even have the grace to cast a shadow. They are hollow men, and they must not be allowed to put their clockwork. Mayne interrupted her, angry. Wait, you'll kill as many of us as you must? What did you do with Jenna? Soft, pink one? She was oily, but toothsome. You, I suspect, and she shook Dawn again, who struggled harder this time, palming something, will need to sit a few days before you are soft enough for my old teeth. Mayna tried to stay calm, but you're scaring everyone away. If any more tenants leave, we won't be able to afford to leave here. He'll have to sell. Mrs. Luz appeared to consider this for a moment. The man's gold is his own to track. Tell him not to sell or I'll collect you next. Mayna didn't quite suppress a shudder. I will, but only if you let her go. I will not. You are the child with a message, so this one is for me. You are thoughtful to have brought her, and she will buy your safe escape. You evil old witch! Mayna threw Dawn's flashlight at Mrs. Luz, and regretted it almost instantly, and one of the folds of skin holding Dawn in place reached out to bat it away. Dawn, in that moment, wrenched herself forward to face Miss Luz, and emptied a can of pepper spray into the folds where her face should have been. Mrs. Luz reeled backwards, screaming, as Dawn pa braced herself against the dress-coloured flesh and pulled her arm free. Come on, this way! Mayna was already running. Dawn, wait, this is the way we came. I know, just trust me. Mayna tailed Dawn back to the door with no knob. No, this is a stupid plan. Do you even know how to turn it on? Only one way to find out. Come on, help me pull this thing open. The wood splintered and came apart. Not open, but open enough for them to crawl through. Before climbing in, Dawn pressed for the remains of the doorknob into Mayna's hands. You're a better pitcher than me. Remember, all you got to do is get her attention. The minute that Jimena stood outside with the records of the door lasted six years, so when she saw Mrs. Luz charging towards her, screaming so loudly it rattled Mayna's teeth, she was a little relieved. If this works, I'm never going to try to solve a mystery again as long as I live. She took a deep breath and shouted, Hey, ugly! Miss Luz sped up, all pretense of a human form giving way to a roiling mass of mottled flesh. To her right she heard a slow whirr and a chunky metallic crash with a smile she lined up a pitch and hit miss luz right in the center of the red blistery mass where her face had been she scrambled through the hole they'd broken in the door and flattened herself against the far side of the compacted door afraid to breathe it was terribly dark dawn had thrown a jacket over the red warning light and was standing in front of the open compacted door Mizlas burst through the broken door, sending splintery shards of wood everywhere, and saw Dawn, fully illuminated by the hallway light, and looking convincingly terrified. Naughty rat, did you think you could hide from me in my own nest? She lunged, and Dawn leapt to the side, letting momentum take its course. Mana slammed the compacted door shut, and Dawn frantically set it in motion. They huddled against each other and waited until the screaming stopped. Neither of them could work up the nerve to open the compactor and make sure that she was really dead. And after that, do, do you think she's the only one? Late at night, they were crammed head to tail into Dawn's twin bed, reminding each other that really happened. What would you do if she wasn't? She even swallowed hard. Well, maybe we should look for them. Maybe they're not all mean and crazy like Mrs. Luz. Maybe there are some nice ones who could, like, use a friend or something. Do you really think anything like her could actually be friends with us? Well, maybe we should look anyway. We've already fought one, right? That makes us practically qualified to find, fight, monsters. I'll think about it, Dawn paused. But you can't tell anyone else, especially not your little brother. He's got a big mouth and you never know who might be a monster. The next week was weird. 
once the court or gag order was lifted, they could talk a little about what had happened. The official word was that a homeless woman had snuck into the basement and attacked the girls while they were cleaning. They ran away, and in her pursuit, she hit her head so hard on the concrete steps that it broke her nose and cheekbone, accounting for the corpse's unusually distorted and swollen face. Unrelated, Mrs. Luz, the longest-lived tenant of their building, died of heart failure. She'd left no next of kin.